so Debbie can read. Debbie's going to join me up there today. Maybe use this one. Okay. Okay, so. So it's going to be a little bit more different today. Debbie's going to join us with uh, reading the verses. But first, um, the Lord is our provider. We've actually heard that quite a few things, a few times this morning. And um, I just want to ask you, though, in this pandemic, this last 15 months, there's a lot of um, things that have been going around, but he's provided for you in some way. And I want to be able to show that. So I want you to stand if he's provided for you in some way in these last 15 months. Whether, oh, okay. Oh, that's <laughs> Look at that. Look around. Now, you know how he's provided for you. Maybe provision in, your, uh, in a job, maybe physical healing, maybe a, a work, maybe money, maybe finances. Somewhere along the line, he's provided for you. Maybe even with it being friends, maybe provided new friends, new fellowship. Maybe he just answered your prayers. Moving on spiritually may have provided for you with peace or a joy or a new love for him or a new love for others. But look around and so that we get things, I was going to say, can anyone dance? Because uh, I want to have a look at a guy called Isaac as well today and his name means he rejoices. So I know, not many of you can, are going to dance, I know that, but um, you're standing can you just raise your arms in the air if you're still thankful to God for what he's done? And then just go around like this so you can see everybody. And then put your arms out and go on like, like this. And then go, hallelujah. <laughs> I got them all to dance. <laughs> they are, Jonathan. <laughs> um, I just want to, uh, you can sit down a little bit now. But the Lord is your provider. I just want to say a lot, couple of other little things before we start. Someone said, is the word getting out? Well, Nico said last week that he put out 99, there was 99 people in the church, but he hadn't counted the pastor and his wife. So it's 101 Dalmatians last week. <laughs> and this week, probably about the same-ish. However, what you may not know is the Facebook Live there is going out to round about each week separate people, 120 to 150 different people. I want to, and I've said that I would do this this morning, but at one o'clock, but Jonathan went over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> As it's one o'clock in, in Africa. Um, there's two churches who are watching on a small, one of them's watching on a small m size of a, your mobile. 23 of them are hovering around this mobile listening to the ark service this morning and that's uh, pastor ibecho from uh east do you want a hanky kisumu. oh east kisumu. kisumu and also uh pastor dominic who also from kenya and they wanted to join us every week so if we can say hello to him can you span it round fonzie at all or not oh he's asleep but anyway, just to say hello to these guys. So it's actually going out to that many people individually, but also to whole churches. Isn't that great? Apparently, though, it's just gone up to 500 after Jonathan's, face, uh, after Jonathan's event. So it's about 500 watching as of now, I think, John. Thank you for that. But actually, he's our provider. And I want us to show that today, that he is your provider. Not just in some things, because when we think of provision, what do you think of provision? When you stood up, was it provision for your monies, which is very valid? Or was it provision for your job? Was it provision and where you needed to live? Whatever thing he's provided for, Jesus is the answer. 
He, the Lord, is your provider. So I want to show that today by having a look at um, Isaac. I just want actually um, to show you that in the whole of the Bible, it all talks about Jesus. Everything points to him, and every time he points to the fact that he is your provider for all things. And when we're able to do that, no matter what circumstances we're in, we're going to be like Isaac, who is going to rejoice. So when you all stood up, can you all stand up again? When you all stood up and, and followed me like this, didn't you? Off you go. Come on, come on. And gave it some of this. That's it, Mike. You're all rejoicing before him, no matter how silly you look. And you do look silly. <laughs> now I'm not the only one. But actually, it does not matter what our circumstances are. At the week... Sorry, you can sit down again now. Actually, no, just stand up again. No, it's just stand up Oh, come... Oh, yeah, sorry, Dad, I didn't see you there. But actually, it doesn't matter. I mean, at the weekend... Um, Last night, I couldn't hardly, I was, had a bit of a, a few problems with my stomach, felt a bit uh, sick. And also, um, England were playing. <laughs> and they drew over the weekend. Then I thought, right, I'll go on to Spain because they'll be better. And they were rubbish and they drew as well. I thought, Portugal, Portugal, they'll do the trick. They get thrashed 4-2. So I like my football, and I think it was this, and a stomachache. I've not got a lot really to celebrate this weekend. However, it was a fantastic weekend. Because my circumstances, or the things around me, didn't affect the joy that we can have in the Lord. Is that just me then? So who else does it apply to then? A couple over there. A couple, and there, and there, and there, and there. Us as all. Because if we know in our hearts that he's our provider for all things, then that changes everything. So let's have a, so can Jonathan just stand? And uh, Michael, could you just stand just once so you can see? I need a lay, uh, Vivian, can you just stand there? Three. Sip, can you just stand there? Four. And Norman can stand, for, please, just there. Everything points of Jesus. I'm going to look at G Genesis chapter 22 in a minute, Isaac. But all the way through, before Isaac was even born, we're going to have a look at this, of why Jesus is our provider. But even just after that, it says that Abraham, which is Jonathan, sent Eleazar, his top helper, Michael, to go and get a bride, Vivian, for his son, Isaac, who haven't I included. And it would, they were carried, and they would be, she would be carried back on camels again. I don't know where these camels keep coming from. But, and camels, which is Norman. <laughs> 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 However, I want you to see that God says that I, I, symbolic of Abraham, will send my chief servant, the Holy Spirit, for my bride, for my son, sorry, Jesus, and receive a bride, Vivian, and it will be carried on the back of the church, which is Norman. Everything, thanks guys, for, you can sit down now, just so that you can see visibly that everything that is in the Bible, Jesus says, I'm your provider. And that's symbolic of the Holy Spirit found you, the bride for Jesus, his son, within the church. But I want to also have a look at as, um, a little bit more. So I'm going to get a, a beautiful helper. I need a helper who's beautiful, who can read, and um, who's my wife. There she is. So I want to do a little bit different. I want to go through Genesis chapter 22. And it does say that it's Abraham is tested. So I'm going to read it out. Debbie's going to read it out. And I'm going to stop her and just talk a little bit, little bit in this time that we have to show us how God is our provider. And I want us to get it from here into our hearts. It's all right reading it. It's okay to say it, but actually to know it in our hearts. 
There you go, Deb. Okay. So, Genesis 22. And before she starts, <laughs> Isaac was promised. The pro he was promised, just as Jesus was. He was also, his name means even, laughter, or he rejoices, or he will smile, he will laugh. Just as they rejoiced over his birth, God the Father rejoiced over the birth of Jesus. And finally, the date of which he was born was set, just as Jesus' date was set. And now let's listen to what happens in Genesis 22. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Just as Jesus has said in John 3, 16, the famous verses, for God so loved the world that he gave his son, his only son, I want us to see that God's setting the scene for what was to come, the ultimate provision. Sacrifice him there. As a burnt offering on one of the mountains, I will tell you about. Early the next morning. Early in the morning. Notice that Abraham fully trusted God or trusted him so much, he didn't hesitate. He got up early to sacrifice his son Isaac because God told him. He didn't wait a couple of days. He didn't give himself an excuse. Obedience is not only obeying what God has said, but it's doing it straight away. Otherwise, it goes into disobedience. He's looking for someone who's trustworthy. In fact, it's the very reason Abraham's name got changed to Abraham because he was obedient. He got up early the next morning to do something which he didn't want to do. Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. I want you to see there that just as Jesus was on the cross, there's a choice. As we stand in front of the cross here, and Jesus was on it 2,000 years ago, there was one either side of him, wasn't there? One that said yes, and one that said no. One that he was able to say, I'll see you in paradise, and we will meet him one day. But on the other side, those who say no, who reject Jesus. Just as we have a choice now, just as Jonathan so uh, eloquently showed us this morning, that we actually, we have a choice. Do we fully accept him? Or are we a little bit in the world, and a little bit of God? Or are we a little bit of God and a little bit in the world? But Jesus makes it clear there's no in-between. Jesus stands in the middle. He's our in-between. He's our sacrifice. And are we going to choose one or the other? Are we fully going to follow Jesus and know that he is our provision for all things? Because when we do, we'll experience full provision for everything that you need in your life. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day... On the third day! This is getting more like Jesus all the time, isn't it? What's the third day? My, one of my favorite verses. Hosea chapter 6, verse 2. I don't know where it comes up there. Have you got that one, Carol? Did he give you that one? While you're finding that, I'll, I'll just think of something else. Do you know, remember, when the Pharisees and Sadducees, they asked Jesus for a sign. Show, on in. Show me who you, yeah, prove to me. Prove to us, they said, who, who you are. And Jesus said, you wicked, wicked, Helen. Not, not wicked, Helen, but just saying Helen. Wicked and adulterous people. You wicked and adulterous generation. I'll give you no sign except the sign of Jonah. What was the sign of Jonah? As Jonah went into the big fish, into the belly of the fish, as we heard on uh, last week on Tuesday, and was there for three days and three nights, 
So it says that Jesus, too, went into the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. But on the third day, he rose again. It took three days. But notice in Hosea, and this is why I love it, it says, after two days, he will revive us. We've been revived. So we'll be dying then or something. And on the third day, he will restore us. Now, Hosea is in the Old Testament. But it says there that he's restored and revived us. He's talking about Jesus on the cross a thousand years later. But we're involved in that. Us. For those who believe in Jesus, we too have been revived and restored back to God through our faith in his death, burial, and resurrection. Us. Everyone say, us. us. Me. You've been revived. You've been restored. You've been placed back where God intended in the Garden of Eden. Back to full health. Back to full provision. He provides for all your needs. You may have a part to play, but his provision for everything isn't just he gives it to you. He, the person, is it, as we'll see in a bit. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son, Isaac. Isaac. Just as Jesus, 3,500 years or so later, they placed the wood on him. The cross he had to carry. Is that just coincidence then? He had to carry his own cross, the wood. Do you know the same word in Hebrew used for gallows or wood or pole is cross, the cross. That's interesting, isn't it? It wasn't even introduced to the world until about 100 BC. And yet here it's prophesied that Jesus himself would have to carry his cross to be the sacrifice for us. And sacrifice, by the way, means to, to, to give something up so that you can receive something. And Jesus sacrificed his life as Isaac was about to be sacrificed for God's sake. But his, Jesus' life was sacrificed so that we could receive life. Your life. So that we could be revived. So that we could be restored. And interestingly, they're on donkeys too. So if you still didn't get it, it was prophesied in Zechariah 9, 9 that Jesus would come on a donkey. Did he do? Did he do that, Stevie? Can he, did he come on a donkey? I think he did. Prophesied just as it says in Zechariah and acted out as Jesus says, go and get my donkey. He sent two of his servants ahead to go and get the donkey so that he could enter Jerusalem as a king. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Mm. The knife. So it would have been a blood sacrifice. He wasn't going to hang him. He was going to sacrifice by the shedding of his blood. Just as Jesus' sacrifice was by the shedding of his blood. Do you know, Jesus had to give all of himself, the whole of himself, so that he could redeem the whole of you. Not one drop of blood was left in him. Do you know, he appeared after his resurrection to the disciples, and it says in Luke that he appeared for them in flesh and bones, not blood, because he drained out every drop of blood for your redemption, for us, for us to receive 
his provision of eternal life. Wow. Jesus did that for us. He was the provision. It says there the lamb. Where's the lamb that's to be sacrificed? Jesus says, I am the lamb. I am the lamb of God. John the Baptist declared it when he saw him. Behold, the lamb of God. I'm not even worthy to tie his laces. But Jesus came as the sacrifice to give everything that he was, the whole of his blood. Leviticus says the life of the creature is in the blood. So he gave all his blood so that you could receive all of life, Angela. All of life. Are we ready to dance again? No, no, it's all right. Just it, not just yet. Come to that after. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So the wood, not only was he carrying it, but also he was laid on top of it for the sacrifice, just as Jesus was nailed to the cross. There's an incredible verse in Colossians, Colossians 2, 13, 14, and 15. If you got that one, please, Carol. It says that the sins, it's as if the cross and the nails, as Jesus was crucified on the cross, then he was, he was symbolic of the sin being nailed to the wood. So the wood was where Jesus was nailed to. But it says that those were symbolic of the sins of the world. Because Jesus took the sins of the world upon him. In fact, he became our sin. And that was nailed to the cross. But it says there that the cross was burnt as part of the sacrifice. So the sins that were nailed to the cross were destroyed too. Just as Jesus not only became your sin, they were destroyed, never to be brought back again. Did you receive that provision? Those who say yes to Jesus, yes to his death, burial, and resurrection, look at Isaac, Isaac where the wood that he was laid upon was burnt, where Jesus says in Colossians that the very sin, our sin, was put on that cross, on that wood, but it was destroyed. Your sins have been taken care of forever. Amen. Jesus, your provider, has provided for you with not only becoming your sin, but burying it, destroying it, never to be seen again. Your sins shall never be brought back against you. You therefore, and have, therefore have no condemnation in cr those who are in Christ Jesus. I think you should call this book the good news, shouldn't we? <laughs> your slate has been wiped clean. Jesus, your provider, is the lamb sacrifice. He spilt all his blood for you so that you could have life and life to the full. Eternal life. That's the provision that God wants to ultimately give us. Yes, we'll need work. Yes, we'll have circumstances around us. Maybe the footballers won't win at the weekend. Maybe you're in the need of a job, need of some finance, needing of a place to live. But God provides for us, provides for you. 
Jesus himself is your provision. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The Lord will provide. It's even called it that. On the Mount Moriah, where Isaac was to be sacrificed, is there now. It's got the Dome of the Rock. Anyone heard of the Dome of the Rock? That sat there. But you know, before I say a little bit about that, it's not only is Jesus your provider, but he also, we have sometimes a part to play. Because you'll say, well, he didn't provide this for me. He didn't provide that for me. I prayed, but that didn't happen. But, some, but sometimes we have a part to play. In, in Matthew, it says that, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and all these other things shall come too. I know, but um, it, I, I mean, I need, I need this, and I haven't got time for the spiritual stuff. I need the physical things now. Seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and these other things that you need shall come too. I can guarantee you that happens. Does anyone have a need today? Seek first his kingdom and my righteousness and it shall be provided to you. Yeah, but I need this job now. I need this rent money now. Yeah, good, great. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things that you need shall be given to you. But I didn't receive what I wanted last week. And I wanted this, and I wanted that. And, but God will provide you with what you really need. Because he loves you. He has your eternal future in his hands. There may be delays, but there'll be a purpose for that delay. So that he can work his provision out for you. Just as it was, took three days for this job with Isaac. It doesn't always happen immediately. But some things get in the way. Usually us. Let's allow God to show his love for us by allowing him to provide for us in every way. Do you know the very next time that... Thanks, Deb. I think that's, uh, that's good, yeah. The very next time that we see Isaac, because it says in verse 19... Actually, could you just read before you go, Deb, what verse 19 says? Then Abraham returned to his servants, and they set off together for Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Where's Isaac gone? The next time you hear of Isaac, he's going to get his bride. About to be sacrificed three days, but the next time you see or hear him in the Bible, he's to get his bride. Just as we've seen that Isaac is symbolic of the work that Jesus was about to do in every way. Not just the knife and the donkeys, but in every way. The next time that we will physically see Jesus is when he comes for us. Jesus, your provider, shall be seen next when we see him face to face. <laughs> Hang on. I can feel it coming on. I can feel it coming on, Stevie. You get your, get, that, get your good knee working. <laughs> Jesus shall return for his bride. It says it in the Old Testament. It says it in the New. Jesus himself says it. Jesus said it to the disciples. I must go so that my Holy Spirit but come, but I shall return for us. And he will come back. And I don't think it's going to be that long. But he's going to come back for us. He the provision shall come back for his bride, us. Isn't it interesting that on this mount, this Mount Moriah, which has got the, um, thanks uh, Mike, yeah, down, down with the rock on there. Tradition has it that Adam was created on that mount. 
Tradition has it that when the earth, the first man, was created by God, it was right there. History tells us, and we know, that the first temple, which was to provide a sacrifice, was on that mount. History tells us that the second temple that provided a sacrifice of blood was on that physical mount. There's a very good reason that Jesus, too, was sacrificed on that mount. I believe he was. If not, he was very close. On that mount now is the Dome of the Rock. But isn't it interesting that these places are all on this mount? But there's one other really interesting thing that's on that mount right there. Jesus talks of in Matthew of a threshing floor. Matthew 3.12 says this. He's talking of his return. It's, and actually it says in Matthew 3, 11, I'll go back one verse. I baptize you with water for repentance. This is John the Baptist speaking. But after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Jesus shall return and when he comes, he will come for his bride or there the wheat, the good, fertile wheat. But the chaff, those who have rejected Jesus shall be burnt up with fire. Just as we saw on the cross, the righteous shall see and live. The unrighteous will die and be cursed. Wow. We have a choice. Do we accept the things of Jesus, knowing that he shall return? Which side of that cross are we going to stand on? But interesting, this picture of this threshing floor is Jesus with his winnowing fork. And he sifts through what is good and what is not good. And the Bible tells us that forsaking Jesus is a sin. Is it? Wow. I thought it was just a choice. It is. But it's sinful not to accept Jesus, it says. So therefore, God who's the righteous God will come back for his people, but he cannot come back for those who have rejected him. He shall come back for the like-minded, blood-covered family of God who are in his, in his kingdom now. But interestingly, on this mount, as well as this first temple, second temple, the place of Adam, place where Jesus was sacrificed, on this mount there is a threshing floor showing us that there is a choice to make and that Jesus shall return and he will come to that threshing floor. Is that, is that real? Yes, it is. There's actually a threshing floor there. And Romans 8.32, which is what I'd like to finish with now. Says this. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? God wants to provide for you. He wants to be your provision for everything in your life. Abraham trusted God. He wants us to trust him with everything that is in your life. Everything that is that you need provision for, he is your provider. He's your provider for you and your family. He wants it for your wife, for your husband, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your neighbors. He wants to be their provider too. Because he will return to his threshing floor and he will 
shake it about and see which is good and which isn't. But it's good news because we've, those who are in Christ have been revived and restored. Can we stand? One of the things that when Abraham and Isaac, um, the story in Genesis 22 is, the provision was the ram and the ram's horn got caught in the thicket. Interesting, that word for the ram's horn is the shofar. So what I want us to do today is actually declare this with the blowing of the shofar and join in in the celebration of it and accept that Jesus is your provider. Seek your heart to see if there's anything in you that you haven't been able to lay down and give to God and say, do you know what, God? I'll leave you to provide that for me. That verse where it says, seek first his kingdom, before it says, why are you worrying? Why do you worry about what you wear? What you're going to eat? Where you're going to sleep? I am your provision for all these things. Whatever's on your heart, whatever's troubling, whatever's causing you concern, whatever you've not handed over to God, whatever you need to, he died on the cross so that you could allow him to be your provider. He's provided you with people. He provides you with the family. We're going to need th this family of God. You go, we're going to need one another. People who flit from one church to another and not stable and make that are going to miss out on the fellowship and on the love that they need and on the gifts that he blesses us all with. Our gifts are for one another. We're meant to share those gifts, to encourage one another, to build one another up. Otherwise, you just stay where you are. Maybe not even knowing it. You think you're okay, but you're not. You're being deceived. We're here for one another to share the things that God has given us, provided us, so that we can all grow together. We're here for a purpose. So I want us to, if that is you, if, if you want to join in with this, I'm going to declare over myself and over yourselves that God is your provider for everything, including your life. If you can, Norm. Better take your mask off. Um, Gray? Yes, please. Do you need that, man? anyway, didn't it? Whether you liked it or not. But I think that there's things that we want to celebrate. The celebration, and I actually asked, not realising that this song was played today, was to break those chains. It's good to say it, but I want to celebrate with Jesus. Otherwise, we sing this song, Breaking Every Chain. And ask God in you, as we sing this song together, to release you so that you can sing and dance as good as me, Okay, look as silly as me, because you're going to dance before the Lord joyfully anyway. You're going to be like Isaac and be rejoicing before God. So if you do want to just sing and dance right where you are, so be it. But let's celebrate today that God is your provider in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, we're at the end of our uh, service today. But God is never ending. And therefore, when we walk out of this place today, if we're still in his presence. We're still in his presence. We're still walking with him. So I pray that you're able to... Sorry. You're able to um, take what you've been given today and just be uplifted and joyful with it. I pray that you've found his presence and he's spoken to you today. So if anybody would like prayer for anything, if you've been touched today or there's something you want prayer for, or simply to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we do have people that would be thrilled and privileged to pray with you. And they will be found, you know, over just to my right. So Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, everything you're doing and everything you are gonna do. Help us, Father, to be the bride. Help us, Father, to be all that you want us to be so that we can be closer to you and we can be obedient to your call, Lord. Father, just help us know your ways and to be ready to listen, Lord, and be ready to act. Well, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.